I got to see Passing when it debuted at Sundance before it was picked up by Netflix. It's the feature directorial debut of Rebecca Hall, and it stars Tessa Thompson. So should you watch this one immediately or give it a pass? Based on the novel by Nella Larson, Passing follows the unexpected reunion of two high school friends whose renewed acquaintance ignites a mutual obsession that threatens both of their carefully constructed realities as two black women who can pass as white and choose to live on opposite sides of the color line in 1929 New York. So like I said, this stars Tessa Thompson, but it also features Ruth Nega, Bill Camp, Andre Holland, and Alexander Skarsgård. Thompson stars as Irene and Nega is Claire, and they're friends who had lost contact and are now reunited. So first, the presentation is just wonderful. I mean, it's shot in black and white with an almost one-to-one -one aspect ratio. And the title of the film refers to lighter-skinned black people being able to pass as white people, which both Irene and Claire can do. There are so many different conversations that happen during this story that tackle racism, but also just address race as a whole. And that dialogue is very piercing at times as it addresses the racism. I mean, even though portions of this came from the 1929 novel, the messages are still very relevant today. The relationship dynamics are also very engaging, and they're even uncomfortable at times. Because both of the leads choose to pass as white, they can go places and even interact with people that darker-skinned black people cannot. There's even an intriguing relationship with Claire and her husband, who's white. There's even a conversation that transpires between Irene and Claire's husband, where in the course of the discussion, Irene asks him if he dislikes Negroes. He responds, no, I hate them. I mean, this is from the guy that's married to Ruth Negga's Claire. So we can see that at some point, the walls could come tumbling down, leading to something just terrible in their relationship. There's an engaging contradiction with Claire as she struggles with wanting the best of both worlds. I mean, she enjoys the privilege of her whiteness, but also misses some of the culture and heritage of being black. And this causes some wonderful, if not very uncomfortable, story friction. But the dynamic tension isn't just between white and black. It also exists within Irene's marriage to a black man. Her husband doesn't want to shield his kids from the harsh reality of racism, and he's trying to prepare them for how life will actually treat them. But Irene wants to keep them from hearing about the terrible things that are done to black people because of hatred. The story conflict that is raised makes us wonder if this is because she is able to ride that line between black and white. I mean, she's able to pass, so does it alter her perception of the world? Or does she merely want to protect the innocence of her children just for as long as possible? She is confronted with the fact, though, that her children are already experiencing racism. The use of language within this story is wonderful. There's a point where Irene is reading a letter, and it could be seen as ambiguous because it means one thing to Irene, and it's interpreted a completely different way by her husband. Now, because we're able to see into the world as observers, we know the true meaning behind the words. But I love how it was utilized within the story as a double meaning, reinforcing the theme of Irene living in two worlds, her whole being interpreted by people's own internal context. The musical score is wonderful. The scenes are filled with piano and jazz, giving both uplifting and conflicting emotions as the scenes progress. And I'm not typically a fan of jazz, but here it really worked. Now, even though this is doing a great job of addressing racism in a direct way, I never got the sense that I was being preached at. I felt this approach made the message more effective. Now, the pacing is slower in this, sometimes making it feel longer than the 98-minute runtime. But it's still not boring or dragging. I mean, sometimes we get lingering scenes that make it feel like an older movie. And that's also evident through much of the aesthetics. The costume design, as well as the set designs, really do transport us to that era. Even the sound design is reminiscent of older films with those unique sounds of ambient traffic as the characters walk down the street. The cinematography is beautiful, from the camera movements and tracking shots to the framing of the characters and the scenes. I mean, they all felt like they'd be right at home in a film from the 30s and 40s. Now, there are a few odd time jumps that skip the story ahead. It's not necessarily cutting out important info, but it did feel a little abrupt at times. I enjoyed the story progression, despite the slower pace, and when we reached the climax, I wasn't prepared for the ending. I mean, it left me in a melancholic state, which I guess is to be somewhat expected, given the heavy nature of the story. So overall, I enjoyed passing. I love how the narrative tackles race while giving us complex characters who are filled with contradictions and truth, especially as they struggle to get ahead in life where circumstances are designed to hold them down. 
The acting is wonderful. And first-time director Rebecca Hall really delivers on a period piece that has an authentic look and feel. But despite my enjoyment of the story, the acting, and presentation, this isn't one that I see myself revisiting often, as it is pretty heavy. There's no sex or nudity, some profanity, and a little bit of violence. I give passing four out of five couches. What are you binging right now? Anything worth checking out? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.